Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also check out some of our other Roku channels like Artist Development, right? Well, let's talk about the Oscar Pistorius trial. From time to time here online on this YouTube account, I'll talk about cases that are in the news and we'll talk about the evidence right I believe in this Oscar Pistorius case one man's opinion I believe it's cut and dry I think he's guilty let's talk about his version of events he claims that in the early hours on the day of the shooting he brings two fans in from the balcony. Now he claims just shortly before that he had spoken to the victim, Reva Steenkamp, who was in bed at the time. Right? Now he claims that, unbeknownst to him, after he brings in two fans from the balcony, Steenkamp apparently goes to the bathroom right now all of this is from the opening statement in the case understand since it's a South African courtroom there is no jury right there's just a judge presiding over the proceeding well after Steenkamp unbeknownst to Pistorius goes to the bathroom Pistorius hears the bathroom window sliding open he claims he's on his stumps. He doesn't have his prosthetic legs. Right? He then fires four shots into the locked, closed bathroom. Right? He then hits the door with a cricket bat to open it after. He realizes that he's just shot his girlfriend. Right? Now this leads us to a few big issues. Big issue number one in my opinion is Reva Steenkamp's clothing. Right? Is it consistent with her taking a bathroom break in the middle of the night? Or as the prosecution claims, is it consistent with her getting dressed up to leave the residence? Right? Pay close attention to that as this trial goes forward. There's a big issue number two. The timing of the gunshots. Right here you have differing testimony from witnesses who live nearby. Were the gunshots, and let's remember there are four of them, were the gunshots fired in rapid succession consistent with the shooting of an intruder, as Pistorius claims? Or is there a pause and screaming? And then more shots, consistent with an assassination. Now let me say, the eyewitness testimony is really interesting. There's a neighbor, Michelle Berger, and her husband, Carl. Both of them claim that they heard screams and then the four shots. Well, think about it. Any screaming before the shooting would be inconsistent with Pistorius events, version of events. Understand, if I'm in a closed bathroom and let's say I'm an intruder, I wouldn't have any prior knowledge that I'm about to be shot. So there would be no screaming. 
right the only time there would be screaming before any shots are fired is if I'm in the house I'm aware of the threat of violence while I'm in the closed bathroom that would be consistent with an assassination let me point out too that there is another witness Estelle Vandermeer who claims that she not only heard shots she's claiming that there was a row going on in the house for about an hour before the shots were fired right that hints of an argument between Reva Steenkamp and Pistorius before any shots are fired right pay close attention to Michelle Berger's testimony Carl Berger's testimony Estelle Vandermeer's testimony right let me also point out too that there are witnesses who claim that they heard a man and a woman screaming right and so let's piece this through Pistorius's people want you to believe that yeah they're screaming it's Pistorius screaming right that's what they want you to believe how would steam camp again in a closed bathroom even have an opportunity to scream or want to scream without any knowledge that she's about to get shot let's go to the next big issue who was screaming and when did they scream was the screaming Oscar Pistorius in anguish after accidentally killing his girlfriend? Or were the screams from the victim, Rena Steenkamp, Reva Steenkamp, before or after getting shot with one or more bullets? Right? If there was screaming and a delay after the first shot, then Oscar Pistorius's story is not credible. Right? Think it through. If there was arguing beforehand, as at least one witness contends, then Oscar Pistorius's story is not credible. Let's talk about big issue number four. When did Pistorius hit the door with the cricket bat? Was it, as he claims, after the shooting? Or was it before the shooting, hinting of an argument that may have led to the shooting? Right, is Riva in the bathroom and Pistorius hitting the door with the bat before firing four bullets into the bathroom? Let's talk about big issue number five. Of the four shots, which was the shot that hit Miss Steenkamp in the head? Was it the first shot which would have prevented her from screaming? Or was it the second, third, or fourth shots which would have allowed for screams? Right? Understand the screaming is key. Right? Now the prosecution wants you to believe this is very important from a forensic science standpoint that steam can may have had her hands up when she gets shot with the headshot right 
if that's the case, then the headshot is a later shot. That would have allowed her, after the initial shots, to scream, just as some of the witnesses are contending they heard. Right? If she's screaming to the men watching this video, would you recognize your wife's screams as you shoot into a bathroom? Let me also ask the question, and it begs to be asked, if I shoot and there's enough time for the person in the bathroom to scream, and if I recognize the screams, right, what's my intent in firing off three more shots? Right, it sounds to me, if the prosecution's right, and the evidence says that Steam Camp has her hands up, if that headshot is a shot that goes through a hand, right, if the blood splatter is such that it looks like Steam Camp has her hands up when she's being shot, then the headshot is not the first shot of the four. Right? The screaming could have come from inside the bathroom. The screaming may well have been a man and a woman screaming and not just Pistorius screaming after the fact as he contends. Let me point out too that there's a very important witness here, a member of the security detail for the development on which Pistorius lived. A member of security claims that after neighbors complained of a gunshot they contacted Pistorius who told them that everything was okay. Right? That's after the gunshots. So, to sum up, given these issues, and it's just one man's opinion, I believe Pistorius is a guy with a major anger management problem. I believe something happened that night. Right? That's consistent with the ear witness, not an eye witness, but a neighbor who heard things, consistent with some argument taking place before Reva Steenkamp puts on some clothes indicating that she may have been on her way out. Right? She then goes into the bathroom. I believe there might have been some more yelling. Then, of course, the shots ring out. I don't buy for a moment that Pistorius didn't consider the possibility before firing the first shot that the person in the bathroom was the woman he was with. Right? If in fact he was having an argument with that woman. Right? If in fact he's in the bedroom when she's putting on extra clothing indicating that she's about to leave. If she's putting on any clothing whatsoever, then he would have to assume, I believe he did assume, that she was going into the bathroom. Right? Just food for thought. Also, if Pistorius is hearing a sliding window in the bathroom, and if there's security detail for his development that's on duty, which was the case, why didn't Pistorius pick up the phone and call security? Understand, Pistorius is a former Olympian. People know who he is. If you're on security detail and some celebrity calls you and says, hey, my house is being robbed, you would know why their house is being robbed. Right? Because, of course, this celebrity has a lot of money and there might be some stalkers out there 
who may also want to invade the house for whatever reason. There's no evidence Pistorius himself is not contending that he tried to contact security because he thought there was an intruder. Isn't there also a bit of a time gap problem here? Right? Because somehow Pistorius on his stumps, according to him, has a firearm and has it pointed at the bathroom door. Now let me make an obvious point that seems to be overlooked here. Let's say it was an intruder. I gotta tell you, if that intruder were me, and I open the bathroom door and I see a guy there with a firearm pointed at me, I'll tell you what, I'm getting out of here. I'm going back out the window in which I came. Am I the only one who thinks that way? If you're robbing a house and the homeowner is there with a firearm pointed at you, how many intruders would continue to try to rob the house? I'm guessing a lot of them would get out of there. So if you believe Pistorius's claim, he's using excessive force, right? Excessive force without notifying authorities because he thought he was in danger based on hearing the bathroom window open, right? To me, that's just not credible. I'm all for self-defense, right? I'm not a gun control type, far from it. But to me, the plausibility of Pistorius's defense here is lacking. Right? One man's opinion. So, to sum up, let's just go through these questions again and answer some of them, or at least try to. Right? Reva's clothing, in my opinion, it's consistent with her getting dressed to leave. It's early in the morning. Right? This isn't someone who just rolls out of bed and says, hey, let me get a bathroom break. Her clothes are consistent with her taking a break from the relationship, wanting to get up out of there, right? So I feel Reva's clothing discredits Pistorius' story. Also the timing of the gunshots. If it's an intruder, it should be bang, 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 right? Here you have some neighbors claiming that there's screaming involved before the gunshots. Well, an intruder wouldn't hop in and scream. Any screaming discredits Pistorius' story. Right? You have any screaming before the gunshots discredits Pistorius' story. Right? Pistorius wants you to believe he was screaming after the shots. If witnesses credibly testify, and it's up to the trier of fact, to decide if these witnesses are telling the truth or are not telling the truth. If witnesses credibly testify that the screaming took place before the shots, Pistorius' story doesn't hold water. Let's go further. During the shots, right? Are they bang, 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 bang? Or is it more of the bang, delay? person in the bathroom has the opportunity to not only scream but also to put their hands up right then of course there is later bang 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 to me that's inconsistent with Pistorius's version of the events let's also talk about who was screaming and when did they scream if the prosecution is right and Reva has her hands up when she's shot in the head, then that shot's not the first shot, and she had an opportunity to scream. Right? Also, let's be real here. Did every witness get it wrong who testified that they heard screaming before the gunshots? If Pistorius' version of events is correct, why would there be any screaming before the gunshots? right also let's talk about when did Pistorius hit the door with the cricket bat isn't that a little bit curious to you 
this cricket bat? Right? Isn't the cricket bat consistent with the testimony of the person who said that there was a row going on at Pistorius's house for an hour before the gunshots? Right? Doesn't the cricket bat also explain why Pistorius has a pistol by his bathroom door? Think about it. There's a cricket bat by the bathroom door. There's a pistol by the bathroom door. That's a lot of stuff by a bathroom door for a guy who's claiming that, you know, he heard an intruder and he was on stumps. Right, so if you, like me, don't believe that the cricket bat came after the shooting, if you, like me, believe that the cricket bat may have been before the shooting, may have led to the screaming from Reva in the bathroom before the shooting, right, it's possible Pistorius is pissed off, hits the door with a cricket bat, right, as part of some attempt to get Reva to open the door, she's screaming, and then, of course, next comes shots into the bathroom. Right? If you believe the cricket bat is before the shooting and not after the shooting, if you believe there's screaming before the shooting and not after the shooting, if you believe there's a pause in the bullets and there's screaming during the shooting, if you believe Reva Steenkamp has enough warning of the shooting to have her hands up, then Pistorius's defense is not credible. That's how I see it. Tell me how you see it. Right, let me point out too. The noise of the shooting is so pronounced that security's alerted. Think about that right? If you've just fired four times into your bathroom, would there be any confusion when you're talking to security after that episode about whether everything's okay, everything's fine, right? Pistorius claims that he told security, I'm fine, I'm okay. Right? Um, is that what you would say if you're in a frenzied panic that even involves, according to Pistorius's own version, a cricket bat? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Let's discuss this case. The case is still ongoing. Tell me whether you feel that I've miscast some of the major issues in the case. Disclose any other evidence that you feel is relevant to a determination of guilt, whether it's inculpatory or exculpatory. Right? Let's talk about this situation. I understand there's a lot going on in the background of this case. Pistorius carrying guns around, Pistorius firing a gun out of a car, Pistorius possibly having an anger management problem that others knew about. Right? My point to you is simply, whoever Oscar Pistorius was, his version of events is inconsistent with that of the ear witnesses. Right? It's inconsistent, in my opinion, with the physical evidence at the case. Right? At the scene. Steen Camp's clothing, for example. Right? Also, it's a little bit questionable to me that early in the morning, if you believe Pistorius' version of events, right, that so much is happening, that he's up taking fans off the balcony early in the morning. Understand, too, there's an issue with regard to the food in Steen Camp's digestive tract. It seems to indicate that she ate two hours before being assassinated. Right? Was there a meal and then was there a row? As the neighbor contends that lasted for an hour. 
before the gunshots? Were they sleeping or were they up? These are the questions. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.